Well, hello there, my YouTube gang. What's up? It's Johnny for City again. Now, today's main lesson is going to be about the formation of the national identity of the ancient Israelites and their mythology. All of which, while debunking Dawson's Creek's vile attempts to circumvent intelligence, or rather, simply lie to people, during a poor and lame attempt to prove that Zionistic land claims and stuff is all based on deception. Now, it all starts with a moronic idea that Hebrews all of a sudden became the Jews when they made up the religion which creepypie thinks came from Kabbalism. Now in other cases this would be just your typical anti-Zionist intellectual dishonesty though that would imply that an intellect was involved. A fact that is swiftly overruled. After all intellects usually have some notion of Time. So just like in Skinny Wop's timeline, you know that it's time to... <laughs> now let's say you're Madonna and you actually believe all this Kabbalah bullshit. So even for you, Kabbalah was only invented here. If however you're a theologian, then you probably know that rabbinical mysticism only started here. And if you can open fucking Wikipedia, then you know that Kabbalah was really invented in the 13th century here. Probably as a countermeasure to the crypto-Christian alchemy that was the big mystic fad of the time. Now, as biblical archaeology, bible criticism, and even fucking common sense suggests, Israelite identity and mythology have evolved over centuries. In fact, it's still doing so today. But as far as ancient Israelites go, we have these three main reformations, all of which pointing back to the common ethnic identity beginning somewhere around there. Meaning that, at best, the shortest time between modern Judaic theology and Kabbalah is 300 years, though a more academic view would probably put it at around 1800 fucking years. And in this universe, a 700 year old theosophy cannot give birth to a 2500 years old mythology. So as far as this goes, I guess, uh... Strike? <laughs> Okay, next. Although Zionism's forefathers were admittedly atheists, biblical accounts of Israelites and Israel was of course part of their narratives very similar to what these guys did. Although these biblical accounts will promptly be dismissed by creepy poo. None of this is historically true. This is all religious history. But you see, in the realm of biblical archaeology, this is not how things work. In fact, when learning Israelite history and in fact Levantine history altogether, you cannot afford to ignore biblical text especially if you can isolate a kind of kernel of truth behind these stories and then you have the archaeological data. Now, what happens when text and artifacts seem to point in the same direction? Then I think we're on a very sound ground historically. Now we'll get to David later on, but for now let's go back to the beginning, to the late Bronze Age, where new settlements start to appear mainly in the central highland of Canaan. But unlike biblical accounts of the Exodus and the Conquest, both of which don't have any extra biblical evidence for them, it seems that early or proto-Israelites seem to have been peasant farmers like other Canaanites. But one interesting difference is the absence of any pig bones. Which brings me to the next dumb claim. There never was in Israel until 1948. Now this claim isn't only wrong, but it gets pretty fucking ridiculous when you make it in defense of a nation called Palestine that virtually didn't exist until 1967. As these hook no Zionist USA controlling Jews have noted. Oh, wait, they're not Jews. Well, this guy must be. I don't think there's a Palestinian nation. I think it's a Palestinian colonial Palestinian nation. When are the Palestinians? Where are they? I think that Palestine, until the end of the 19th century, was the biggest part of Syria. Oh, wait. That's a Palestinian leader who actually served in the Israeli parliament. Yeah, apartheid. <laughs> right. That also spied for Hezbollah. Damn, damn reality. Now, unlike the phantom Palestinian nation, Israel is actually one of the most well-documented nations in ancient history. 
basically beginning with those pig bones free settlements dating back to more than 3,000 years ago. But how do we know these were Israelites? Well, first of all, because they appear in places that the Bible identifies as strongholds of Israel. But more importantly is the extra biblical account recorded in the Menepta Stele of 1204 BCE, which is a triumph stela commemorating victory over foreign peoples. And the text reads, Ashkelon has been brought captive, Gezer has been taken captive, Yenoam has been seized, Israel has been shorn, its seed no longer exists. Now obviously Marnepti was wrong, but this gives us clear evidence that Jews and the military industrial complex paid Pharaoh Mar Nepte to give us evidence that shows that there was an identifiable entity Israel in Canaan by 1204. Moving onwards a few hundred years to the actual kingdom of Israel, you have stuff like the Moabit stone where you find the name Omri, the king of Israel who originally subjected Moab. We also see his title, Melech Israel, king of Israel. Now, since like its neighboring kingdoms, Israel was sometimes a vassal state, their collaboration with and revolts against their parent empires gives us even more extra-biblical written proof for the existence of Israel. After all, all these kings are not figments of imperial imagination. And that's without even mentioning Judean kings. So with this claim, we get... <laughs> Next. Even in the Bible, Israel isn't land, it's a name. Speaking of names, I wonder how the Palestinians feel being the only fucking nation on earth that can't even pronounce their own fucking name. But in any case, going back to Creepy Boy's original claim, he's of course 100% correct. Well, except for here, 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 and here. Now, amazingly, you don't even need to check the Bible to find that out. Indeed, only common sense would do. After all, in biblical etiological naming, there's a thumb rule that says that a land is called the land of X if the children of X live there. You know, like the land of Canaan, Midian, Moab, and Judah. And since throughout the fucking Bible, Israelites call themselves the children of Israel, the land where they live would probably be called the land of fucking Israel. So as far as this claim goes... But going back to this endless repetition of the children of Israel thing, one should wonder why is the Bible so obsessed with this common tribal ancestry? Now, miraculously, Dawson Creep actually gets it right when he says that Israel is in fact a name given to Jacob after he went into a wrestling match with an angel or God or some immortal thing. But if you look at the story, it's not only his name that changes, but actually his entire character. I mean, heck, a guy called Jacob was willing to work free for seven years just to get the wife that he didn't want and let it slide. And then all of a sudden you get this badass guy called Israel who basically kicks God's ass. And now we suddenly have a patriarch worthy of giving his name to his nation. But manufacturing this Israel patriarch doesn't end there. You see, when researchers went and dug up stuff from the stories of the three patriarchs and then cross-referenced them with extra-biblical evidence, they swiftly came to the conclusion that the three patriarchs were not descendants of one another, but actually contemporary patriarchs of three groups of tribes, localized more or less in the following way. Abraham tribes around here, Isaac tribes around here, and Jacob tribes around there. And again, what you see is this sort of etiological reverse engineering that tries to merge all those different tribes and peoples and patriarchs back into the ethnic group from which they came. Or as Fuckface put it, And from that bloodline, come the Israelites and the 12 tribes and the rest of the rhetoric. But it's not only tribes and patriarchs that are converged, but also kingdoms. And this is where David comes in. Now, one of the best tools to spot fucktars that have no fucking clue what they're talking about is when they talk about the history of the Israelites and say something like this. It's not real history of the Hebrews because interchanging Israelites and Hebrews is wrong, 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 wrong. 
Wrong, 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 wrong. Now, without getting into the conversation of who the Hebrews were, unfortunately, the only unlikely extra-biblical source of the name, at least, are the Hafiru or Habiru that were groups that are causing turmoil and upset in Canaan, who were mentioned in letters from Canaan to Egypt in the 14th century BCE. But most importantly, they weren't an ethnic group so much as a marginal social group. So why did I mention the Habiru gangs to begin with? Well, you see, David in the Bible is actually portrayed sometimes as a sort of a member or even leader of this Habiru type gangsters whatever. You know, people who look like this. <laughs> But portraying David as an asshole doesn't end there. I mean, for fuck's sakes, this guy is actually willing to kill a loyal soldier just to steal his wife. Set your eye on the forefront of the hottest battle and retire from him that he may be smitten and die. Now, you need to remember that back in ancient times, the guys who actually used to write stuff down were the king's scribes. And not the kings, nor the descendants, and certainly not their scribes, would go and portray their house founder as a fucking asshole. Which gives us clear evidence that there are at least two sources going into this story of David. The southern Israelite or Judaic House of David source, which saw David as a giant killing Superman. <laughs> and the northern Israelite or Omri house source which basically portrayed him as fucking peeping Tom. <laughs> okay, now look at these two points there. And now try to figure out why the Bible is working so hard to prove to Israelites that they are indeed one nation coming from one original patriarch, from one original kingdom and worshipping, yes, a one original god. Also remember that while most mythologies deal with demigods and deities and whatever, the Bible seems to be a story about a nation. And all this forging of a nation that went on both organically and deliberately for centuries, starting mostly from there, but intensifying there, brings me to my final point. Beginning more than 3,000 fucking years ago with a... Various elements went into the final mix that would emerge as the nation Israel. Local Canaanites escaping slaves from Egypt. It even seems that some local foreigners were admitted to the community. And ever since then and throughout history, we get proof after fucking proof that the land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here, their spiritual, religious, and political identity was shaped. Here, they first attained to statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and impelled by this historic and traditional attachment, Jews strove in every successive generation to re-establish themselves in their ancient homeland. A task which I might add we did quite nicely despite all external and internal hardships and despite people like this fucking mononeuronic wasted assembly of twat flap cells. I don't have some way to put it. That's the way it is. So, Israel. Happy birthday, and like always, my beloved YouTube gang, peace, love, harmony, have a good one, people. I love you all. <laughs>